What's up YouTube? NC Hill here. Got my Gen 4 G19 Glock. The often criticized Glock Gen 4. The G19. Supposedly it ejects casings and hits you in the forehead and puts dimples between your eyes or something. I don't know on the internet. It's a Gen 4. It's pretty. Somebody was asked somebody was asking me about the mods I did to the trigger on Glocktop.com and I told him I'd take a picture or make a video and I decided to make a video. So a couple so I'm gonna do a couple of videos. This video is gonna be on my external mods. You know, I mean you may like them, you may not like them. I I really don't care. It's what I like. It's my gun. I purchased it. If I want to, I'll throw it in the fireplace, watch it burn. You do what you want with your guns, I'll do it with mine. I love to share the knowledge. I love to share what works for me. If people like it, do it. If you don't, leave it alone. Go about your own thing. With that, with that said, that's my little disclaimer for all the haters out there. Because there will be some. I've touched a Glock. I've done something to it. I've changed something. It's unsafe. You know, sh I should go shoot 500,000 rounds through it, and and it would be it, it would be perfect. Well, I don't have that kind of money to go or that time to shoot 5,000 rounds. I'd rather take 10 minutes, 15 minutes with a Dremel, get it where I like it, and then go shoot it. So, got some. Uh, what was that? I believe those are Spear Gold Dots, 125 grain. Anyway. In my videos, I'm not going to sit here and show you that it's clear, it's clear, it's clear. I know it's clear. I racked the slide, nothing popped out, so I know it's good to go. First off, I like to do my own grip tape. I mean, Talon grips are nice grips and all, but $11? I mean, seriously, that's $0.15 cent worth of skateboard tape. And I think it feels a whole lot better. I mean, I, I mean, if you, somebody can get $11 for these, that's fine. Sell them. More power to you. I like to make a patch on the back. I like to do the finger wheels. I like, I like it in there. I had one here and it slid a little bit and I may go back and add it. I may not. I'm not really sure if I like it there. Somebody's probably seen the pictures where I put it, but that's my grips. Very cheap to do. I enjoy sitting down here and cutting them out and fit them, so that's what I like to do. I put the uh, Trigicon HD sights with the orange front on it. I uh, had a little issue with that, and by the time I got them on right there, I had pretty much all the writing that was on that side got beat off. Uh, of course, the front sight's easy to do. And you may have seen the Newfoundland dog every time I start. There he is. Every time I start a video, he's got to get up and walk around. He hears me talking, I guess. All right. So he'll be, you'll hear him on the floor and see him in the hallway and whatever else it is he's doing. Okay, right now I've got some other ideas. Anyway, the uh, Trigicon, Trigicon HD sights, love them. Orange front, photo, the luminescent paint, charge it for a few minutes with some light. The paint itself actually glows out with a good orange sight. It's got a huge sight picture, so they, they, they do the big U so more light can get through, easier acquisition of your target in the daylight. It has the tritium inserts in the back with no... They don't do any kind of paint around it because they really want you to look through that U. Let's see if I can get a sight picture for you. And a lot of light get between the blade, the front sight, and the rear sight. Acquire that orange and get on target. Nighttime, these glow good. It has the tritium insert in the front. Nice sights, really like them. Paid like $115 on Amazon.com for them. Uh, okay, now to the good mods. I know everybody's going to say, oh, you took a Dremel to it, you ruined it, you're, blah, 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 you're not a gunsmith, whatever. You know, it's polymer. I don't care. I'm not going to sell this gun. I don't care if I hurt the value or if I help the value. It's my it's my pistol. I'm keeping it. It's not going anywhere. It's going to stay in my collection. It's a 19. Everybody's required to have a Glock 19 at some point. Whether you like Glocks or not, i it's number one Glock selling gun, so I might as well have it. This is my preferred Dremel wheel. By the way, I've got the 
I've got, everybody says take a high speed Dremel. I got the Dremel 8200 cordless with the adjustable speed rate from like 5,000 to 30,000 RPM. Love that Dremel. Good power. But I took this wheel right here, and you'll notice I cut down where the finger grooves. The 19, just, I got some big, thick, fat fingers. The 17, hey, fits my hand perfectly. The 19, the old one, it just, it pushed it down, and it felt like my fingers were on the humps. So I took the wheel, little by little, till I got it where I liked it. I undercut the trigger guard. I did it several times, took it out in increments. I've got it pretty much where I like it right now. I think I'm going to go, if you look at this wheel, it's one of the wheels out of the pack. I've got the big Dremel pack here with everything, known to man. And there's some rougher sandpaper ones and some finer ones. It's one of the finer ones. Oh, there's a little wheel right there I might try later. I didn't see that little one. Yeah, it's got like 60 grit and 120 grit. This is a 120 grit one, not the 60 grit. And I had used it on something else, so it's smoothed down even more than 120 grit. But I just dremel that. Dremel. The hook, the hook doesn't bother me. I, I may take the hook off. I kind of like the look of it. You know, if you mount a light on it, some of the lights fit perfect to it. I don't know. Hook, hook, I could care less. I do know, I do like the Blackhawk Serpa holsters, and I know that... I wouldn't. I would never cut any of this front off because that's how it secures into the holster with that hook, with the with the finger retention. So I wouldn't mess with that at all. But so I cut this down, and I may go back and cut some more of this. Where there ain't no shadow because of the light. I may cut some more of this out right here. And I was looking in the Dremel wheel, and I found this one, which will probably do it up in there. And then there's, I may even drop down to something this small to just get it exactly where I want it. I wouldn't mind cutting some more of that out. This is fine from from here over is fine in that area, so my finger will fit up in there just maybe a little bit better. I haven't really decided yet. You can always take polymer off. You can never put it back on. So it's always been my theory. Cut a little bit off. See how you like it. If you think you can improve it, go back. Take a little more off. Don't do it all in one bite if you don't have to. But it fits my finger. It feels a whole lot better than it did. Yes, I am left-handed. So that's what I did there. Uh, there's something else I was going to show you. Uh, other than that... When I put the tape on the rear, this is the medium back strap. I did take and Dremel down the, I guess they call those the RTFs or whatever. I did Dremel where the patch is at. I did Dremel them down so it would stick better. I did not on the sides. So I can take this tape off. This this wouldn't be no good. This strap wouldn't be no good, but you can order one for like $8 online. And I could have the original gun with the original RTF. There's nothing. The only thing that would be changed would be that at this point. Of course, the St. Bernard goes to snoring in, and the Newfie's up moving again. Okay, back to the video. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the triggers in this video. Let me show you what I got here. This right here is the original trigger that came with this pistol. It's a Gen 4. It's got the sport trigger for the compacts and the subcompacts. I do not like that. I, I realize they have to do it for import purposes and to get it by the BATFE with their point system. They get two points for the sport triggers, what they call that, with the little serrations or whatever. Everybody loves a Glock smooth trigger face. Well, so I ordered a couple. These are from Brownells.com. They got them in like three days decent priced. This is the original one. I did do the 25 cent trigger job disc. You can see the cruciform sh uh, shiny back here. I dremeled it up and I used where's that? 
All I did, I used one of these. Everybody says, oh God, you take the Dremel to the internals and you ruin the gun. It's a cotton pad. And you can. Use, everybody says use flits. I like flits. I didn't have none, so I used Mother's Mag and Wheel Polish. Same thing, basically. Had it on hand. Didn't cost me nothing. Didn't have to run out the store. So I cleaned that up. Uh, then, like I said, this is a Gen 4, so there's that little hump or notch or bulge or whatever you want to call it right there. But my problem with this, the way the trigger comes stock, and bear with me here, is that when you depress the trigger with your finger, this this face right here is flat. The trigger is curved. I guess it's so when you have gloves or whatever, it doesn't has it doesn't have to be as precise. And I'm actually gonna see how it sticks up right there. Well, that, if you go shoot all day, that's really that's a ridge digging into your finger. After after a couple hundred rounds, that starts to hurt. So what I did, I'll show you on the. I've already did the the, the uh, flat trigger because I was going to install it in, the, in this pistol, but then I got to thinking about something else. But this one's been done. What I did, I take and I, if you mash right here in the back, you can totally press that trigger safety like I can right there with that one and then I took my little sandpaper Dremel wheel and I just went in there and I just let it go with the flow of the the curve of the trigger and you can see right there I got the trigger face a little bit itself but I'll sorry about the uh, camera by the way I need to get a new camera this is actually a picture camera I'm using to do video with but I caressed the trigger safety right there until now it's the same curvature as the trigger itself so when you mash it it's totally flat there's nothing sticking up there's no little ridge well before I did this one I had also ordered a let me show you right here break it down real quick I had ordered a stock, I guess this is a Gen 3 G19 trigger without the hump because I wanted to look at it. There's no hump there. Hold on, real quick, show you. I'll do another video. I ended up taking every piece of metal in here that I could possibly get to and polishing it up, and I've got a smooth as butter trigger. And I'll do another video on that. But every, even the guide rails, everything, even. Everything I, everything I, I, I think it looks good. Some people don't like it. I mean, I guess that's been dipped or something, and that's fine. It's probably corrosion proof. I'm not. I'm going to clean my guns after after a ring trip. I'm not going to go shoot a Glock, let it sit and stay for six months, and go. Oh, let's go shoot again. Let's clean it. My gun's going to be clean. I mean, that's just the way I am. Military. You shot your pistol. You shot your weapon. You cleaned your weapon. You know, they had inspections. Any hair you see, I have a couple of dogs, so that's inevitable with the oil in there. You can't get rid of all the lint hair, it's just not going to happen. So, But anyway, back to this. So I took the sport trigger out of a Gen 3 G19, or a 26 or a 27, well, I mean, whichever one, compact, subcompact. And I took my Dremel wheel, and I just said, well, let's see what I can do with this. And the serrations, I don't know if you can see it with this camera or not, but I took the Dremel wheel and I and I loved on them a little bit, both sides, so they're not as crisp. You can see, I mean, I just cut them down. There's, you can still barely see them. There's a little grab, but it feels a whole lot better. It feels more like this flat trigger than it does this sport trigger. And then I also I Dremel to the curve to the curve of the the trigger curve so that the, the trigger safety when fully depressed and it still sticks up just a little bit maybe let me see no it pretty much it goes all the way so when it closes it's a flat surface it feels way better okay I know somebody's gonna say oh oh you cut down on the trigger safety it made the gun less safe no I think it makes it more safe and I'll show you why Let's reassemble the pistol here. 
before when you had the sport trigger to defeat that safety it did not have to go completely into the gun see there's still some space there so if something got in there it didn't have to it didn't it could touch the trigger safety without ever touching the trigger itself and fire the weapon now which I check it okay now that trigger safety has to go completely flush against the trigger itself before it'll disengage see okay I'm putting pressure on it until it goes completely there's no firing so I guess if something got in there and didn't completely press that trigger yeah, there's no way for it to fire it'd be pretty close right there oh it did fire oh well we're dead anyway I, I feel it made it made it safer now your finger has to completely depress it before it could barely get there and it would fire because it's stuck up because it was flat now when you put your finger it needs to completely compress or depress not compress anyway it feels better it's still I, I don't have my gauge with me but I did measure it with all the polishing and I got rid of the and the gen 3 because it actually feels better so several people have said it on the internet so I had to try it out without that nub or whatever that thing's called right there it is a smoother pull it is from here to here is butter oh I was saying I did measure it it is still a five and a half pound pull it my finger gauge says it's lighter but the the real gauge still says it's five and a half pounds there's no grit in the take up it feels smooth you hit the wall crisp break on the reset There's still an audible click. It's firm, crisp. But that's the modifications I've did to the outside of my G19. I'll do another video and show you everything I polished inside and and I'm still waiting on a four and a half pound Glock connector. I guess yes, you know act, they have to you order them then they send an order and they make them or something. I don't know why it takes so long from Glock parts I wish I could find one this pistol I want to shoot GSSF so I'm not going to order a go everybody's going to tell me the, the ghost rockets the ghost connectors everything except the sights is made by Glock for GSF, GSSF competition so thanks for watching my video I know I ramble a lot and I went on but I hope I answered any questions or or hope I inspired you to customize your own pistol I'll do a video of the internals I'll do a video when I get the connector. I'll do a video if I do anything else to the pistol. Got a couple other ideas. Uh, thanks for watching YouTube. NC Hill out. Hey, NC Hill here. Just a quick update. I hadn't even seen this in my little kit. I got the uh, 80 piece or 160 piece Dremel kit here. awesome kit. I hadn't even seen this little drummer, drum sander. It's a little rough. It's not 120 grit, so but it was perfect. Oh, let me unload it here. I was just feeling it. I was able to uh, take this, and I still got to do a lot of sanding, but I was able to cut down in here a whole lot. Where I remember I was in the uh, prior I couldn't get down in there with the big drummer because I didn't want to cut into that any. As you can see, there's a, I don't know if you can see it, there's a gap. There's some light there. This little this little sander was able to get down in there and cut that out, and it feels so much better now. That is exactly where I want it. So I got some uh, 800 grit sandpaper here. And I'm going to get a little water and do some wet sanding, get that all smoothed out, and that's going to be good to go. That's that's where I like that G19. NC Heel out.